two, one. Okay, so welcome to this one. I want to prove the expected value for the binomial distribution that it basically is equal to n times p. So n is going to be the number of trials that we have, and then p is just the probability of success. Now, if you you know want an introduction to binomial distribution with some examples, I'll put up a link up above there. You know, you can go and watch that video. And here I'm just interested, um, kind of algebraically showing that the expected value indeed is n multiplied by p. So one of the first things that I want you to recall, or at least two things that I want you to recall, if we wanted to um, find out what the summation of all the probabilities are, we know that the summation would have been equal to one by definition. And if you are looking, um, let's say, you know, if you have M trials or it could have been N trials, I'm just using M in here and you'll see why a little bit later on. Okay, it doesn't matter what variable we're gonna be using uh, for the number of trials. But let's say if you have M trials, then what you would have is, you would have, okay, the um, first probability, okay, of no successes, okay, so that is the first term that you see there, which is M choose zero, so zero successes, uh, probability P to the zero, and then one minus P, M minus zero, okay, that term is the probability, okay, of no successes at all. Now, if we keep adding it, okay, plus, you know, what happens if you had one success along those trials, okay, then we would find the probability. And then we would say plus, and we can continue on until we basically go from zero successes all the way up to M. And if we sum all of them up, um, then the summation is equal to one, all right? Now, sometimes you will find that, you know, teachers, um, your instructors or profs, they might be using, you know, for the one minus p, they might use a variable. Um, I just kind of write it out as one minus p just to remind you that, you know, success, okay, and then no successes, um, you know, they sum up to one uh, together. So I'm not going to use another variable because there's enough variables in here. The other item that I want you to know is the expected value if we were calculating it, you know, straight. So, you know, coming back into here, um, we know that the answer is going to be this and we're gonna prove it, okay? So it's very easy, you know, n times p, but if we did it by brute force, then we would have to actually compute the entire thing. And that would have been, um, you know, zero successes multiplied by, you know, the probability of zero success plus one times the probability of having one success plus so on, so on. And then what is all of that equal to? And it turns out that it actually does equal to n times p, and that's the goal, and that's probably why you're trying to watch this video, okay? So I'm going to, at first, just so that I simplify this thing for myself a little bit, okay, is I'm going to write this out in sigma notation. So instead of writing it out the way I did, so by brute force like this, let's use sigma notation. and. <clears throat> you know, everyone should notice that that first term is just equal to zero, right? Because it's zero times the probability, which is just zero. So this thing is equal to, okay, the following. So that's going to be x. So instead of starting from zero, I'm going to start from one. Um, that term is gone. So it's going to go all the way up to n. And what I'm doing with this expected value, I'm just taking x multiplied by, and this is going to be, so this is n, choose x multiplied by p, okay, to the x multiplied by one minus p, okay, n minus x, okay? And that's exactly the same thing except in sigma notation. And all of that is supposed to be equal to n times p. So the question is how? Okay, so first off, okay, I'm gonna take this whole thing, I'm gonna duplicate it, put it just down below in here. Um, instead of writing my okay, um, combinations and choose X in this way, so I'm going to remove this and I'm going to actually write it out like I normally would if I would be computing it. Okay, so this would have been N factorial 
divided by, this is going to be n minus x factorial times x factorial. That's just by definition, okay, of the n choose x. Now, why am I doing this? Uh, the reason is because I kind of know that I want my answers to be equal to n uh, times p. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out n and p out of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the n and the p out. I'm going to factor that out outside of that sigma notation entirely. So to have that. So again, so let me duplicate this right here. Make my life a little bit easier. And now I'm going to remove the n out of here. So I'm going to take it out. So that means this is going to be n minus 1 factorial now. And I'm going to remove the p. All right. So I'm going to remove the p out of here. So this is going to be now x minus 1. So that's my p. So those are, those are the two things I wanted to take out. And my goal will be to show that this entire thing is just equal to 1. And if I do that, then we have our expected value. All right? So let's continue. So the next item that I'll do, I actually notice, so right here, I notice that I have an x. Okay, I also have an x in here, x factorial. Okay, so if that x factorial at the bottom, if I factor that out, so I'm going to just concentrate on this right here, duplicate it, and what this is going to give me, so that's going to remove that, and instead of having x factorial in here, this is going to be just x minus 1 factorial, all right? So this is going to be x minus 1 factorial. I'm going to shift this over, okay? And again, please remember that I'm trying to show that this is now equal to 1. So that, that I can then show that the expected value is n times p. All right. So with this, um, this is you know a little bit of a, something to keep in mind. Um, I'm going to expand the sigma notation back to kind of the additions. So I'm going to take for each value. So for x is equal to 1, I'm going to expand this. Okay, and then x is equal to 2, x is equal to 3, all the way x is equal to n. And you'll, you'll notice a pattern, all right? Now, just so that you can kind of take a peek and think about this, I'm going to, you know, eventually, not instantly, but I'm going to set m is equal to n minus 1, and I'm going to set j is equal to x minus 1, okay? And you'll see what... what actually happens when we do this. Okay, so let me take this entire thing and start expanding. So for x is equal to 1, so how does this going to look like? So for x is equal to 1, it's going to be n minus 1 factorial divided by, and this is going to be n minus 1 factorial, okay, and then it's going to be 1 minus 1, so this is going to be 0 factorial, all right? So that's what I have there. Multiplied by, okay, this is going to be uh, p, okay, and then 1 minus 1, so this is to the 0, and then this is going to be 1 minus p, okay, and then this is going to be n and minus 1, all right? Now, that's my first term. Second term, okay, what do I have? I have n minus 1 factorial all over, and now I have n. Okay, in here, minus 2 factorial, and then I have 2 minus 1, so it's going to be 1 factorial, times p to the 1, multiplied by 1 minus p to the n minus 2 plus, okay? Now, you should start noticing, now, if I keep going with this, all right, dot, 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 I'm going to get... Okay, the next thing is going to be, okay, so notice that here, for example, this is 0, this is 1, so the next one, p is going to be to the 2, this is n minus 1, n minus 2, so the next one is going to be n minus 3, this is always going to stay the same, n minus 1, okay, and this is n minus 1, this is n minus 2, so then it's going to be n minus 3, and notice this is 0, 1, 2, and so on. 
Now, if I substitute, okay, so notice what I'm going to do now, okay, if I take all of this and now I start substituting, if I let m is equal to n minus 1, so what is going to happen? I'm going to switch back to here. If So I'm going to switch this, so n minus 1, so this is going to be m, right, okay, so that's that. Okay, this is going to be turning into M as well. Okay, so that's that. And now this, okay, so this right here, N minus 1, so this is also M. Okay, so that would have been my first term. Now, if I do that for the second term, all right, so this all of a sudden, so N minus 1, this is M. Okay, now here, this is n minus 2 is the same thing as n minus 1 minus 1. So this is actually going to be m minus 1. All right, and that same thing. So notice, this is going to be m minus 1. So what are you noticing in here? Okay, so this entire thing. Okay, so this right here. This is basically nothing else but m you know, choose zero, okay, within here. This one right here is m choose one, okay, and then it would have been m choose two, m choose three, okay, all the way up, okay, as we would continue on. Now, if you expanded this, this is nothing else but that. So it is actually the summation of it. We would have come up with exactly the same thing, which is that, which is just equal to one. And this would complete your proof. So if this entire thing is equal to 1, okay, then all you have left is n times p, and you've proved your expect, expected value for the binomial distribution. So I hope that was helpful. You know, you can try it out um, yourself. You can rewind, pause it, okay, and then manipulate it as you go along. You did need quite a few tricks in here to try to get that result if you're doing it algebraically. All right, thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Bye, everybody.